So good morning, everybody. Today's January the 25th. Good to see everybody here. Wow, we've got a good group today, and I'm excited about that. So January the 12th, 2023. It takes me so long to even say that. Uh, and like I said last week, I'm glad I don't write too many checks anymore because I have a hard time writing 2023. So my name is Keelan Johnson, and uh, I am the sales manager for all of this Central South area. So uh, I'm glad you're on here, whether you're uh, here in Texas or someone else or somewhere else on a, with another group. But glad to be on here. Today is new agent training. For those of y'all that are brand new, I do see some of you. I'm going to try to quit leaning on my desk because it shakes. Um, I've been in the business for 23 years. I've been a farmer's agent, a business consultant. Uh, I managed uh, several other companies as far as the insurance business goes. And now back with Security National Life, or with Security National Life since 2016. So I've been doing final expense uh, and managing agents since 2016. And so uh, you're with a great company. There's other companies out there, other carriers, but I feel like with our product, the things that are coming down the pipeline, uh, the support from home office, uh, the support from me, the support you get from the tools, you can be appointed with multiple carriers or have a lot of irons in the fire and we call it the jack of all trade and the masters of none uh, but i would strongly advise in 2023 uh, and i say this every time and i won't quit saying it probably until i come up with something new uh, is that we are protectors and when you see me say hey let's go protect people that does mean that i am passionate about that and i won't go off on my tangent you've heard it probably enough of you know who are we going to protect where are we going to be one day and how are we going to be known what is our tag and and what are we known for um so i'm super excited you're here today i want to show you around a little bit for a second for brand new people then i want to dive into the presentation and i want you to i want to try to help you understand maybe some key points about the presentation whether that presentation be in person or whether that presentation be over the phone. It can still be the same and it can still be uh, you know, impactful to the people. I pulled this up today. I always like to start with a little bit of something that's not mine, someone else's that I stole. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It may be really small uh, because when I blow it up a little bit, it gets muddled. Uh, but it basically says this. These are the top selling behaviors it can be virtual, it can be non-virtual, it can be in person, or it can be virtual uh, on that. The top selling behaviors for customer engagement, to get people engaged, to get people on your level. These are the top selling behaviors. 61% of your behavior needs to be focused on establishing credibility and trustworthiness. Now, I want you to really think about that. In your 2023, when you struggle in sales, when you struggle talking to people, when you struggle in these in these areas, uh, you know, 61% is establishing credibility and trustworthiness. We have to have to have to be able to, when we're talking to people, uh, establish that credibility. You know, am I doing the right things? Do they trust me? Am I credit worthy? Am I wearing, am I looking nice? Do I smell nice? Do I talk nice? Do they know who I am? Am I branded? Or is it, am I just someone out there like this? You know, you gotta look at yourself before you go to me. You go, oh, my collar's all hanging out or my hair is all hanging out or whatever. I gotta straighten up here. Yes, or whatever it is. But yeah, that's true, you know. Your, your, your outwardly appearance, um, the way you present yourself, the way you listen, the way you respond is all building trust and credibility. Most all the time when I talk to agents and, I, and they say, hey, Keelan, I'm not doing well. I'm not you know, making, I'm not, I'm not, they don't trust me. You know, when we dive into it, it's something small that they did. What did you wear to the door? How did you talk to them? Uh, are you getting on their level? If they talk fast, are you talking fast? If they talk slow, are you talking slow? Did you ask them about their family? Did you mention where are you from? You know, how are things going? Or did you just go right into the sale 
and try to get commission breath and really just without establishing credibility and trustworthiness. That's 61% of your job is credibility and trustworthy. When you go to the bottom of it, preparing questions and doing the presentation is only one third as important as establishing your credibility. How long have you been in the business? You should trust me, I'm from here. I'm from this area. Calling on the phone. Hey, I'm Keelan Johnson over here in Georgetown, Texas. That's right in the middle of Texas. That's right over here in this area. Now, you know, where are you from? Oh, Houston, oh, I've been there before. Oh, San Antonio, oh, you got the Riverwalk. Oh, in the Valley, I know some people from the Valley. Oh, you got Dallas and Fort Worth. Oh, hey, Cowboy fans, hey, you know. Conversations, engaging the client, engaging your customer, and establishing that credibility and trustworthiness. If you skip step one, it, it goes downhill from then. You just become a salesperson. And I don't want to become a salesperson. I want to be a serve -ut. I want to serve people. Part of serving people is getting to know them and establishing that trustworthiness. That way they can walk along the side of you. Number two, 55% of, of the selling behaviors include developing rapport. Rapport means that they feel like you're one of them. You're from the same place. You grew up in the same area. It can be either Texas, it can be United States, it can be whatever it is, as small as it is or as big as it is that you're making contact with and you're building the rapport so that they feel like you're not just walking in front of them, leading them along the path and they're not in charge of the conversation. Y'all are both in this together and you're building rapport with the, with the people. Managing the sales call. Have you ever been on a sales call to where the, the person is talking all the time and you're not? Uh, yeah, Daryl, thank you. Uh, remind me later. I will post this on my Facebook. That way you can share it. By the way, if you're not a, if you if you're not connected with me on Facebook, jump on there. That's where I share a lot of content that you can share with your people or you can use. Uh, and I think this is this is good. Uh, all of us can use this together. Okay, all together. So the third one is managing a sales call. Are you talking more? Are they talking more? Are they telling you, you know, what they want to hear? Or are you, you know, you talk to people all the time and they're going to be like, hey, Fania, hey, Daryl, you know, I know you can't cover me because I've got this going on. I've got this going on and I've got chronic heart failure. You can't, you can't cover me. I know I'll try with many companies. Hold on there, sir. We can protect you. We can do that. Let's slow down and talk about this a little bit. When did you have your heart issue? What are you taking? Sure. Yeah, we've got it. We've got a product for you and we can take care of you and definitely do that. Let, make sure that you're not letting them control the conversation and make sure you're not just controlling the conversation all of the time. Manage it effectively. Okay. The fourth one is network through contacts, you know, and in clients and referrals. Ask them where they're from. Oh, I know somebody over there. I've got a client over there, you know, or I've been over there to talk to some people. I know where you're at. I'm in, the, I've been in that neighborhood before. I've driven through there. It's a nice neighborhood. Or yeah, I've got Bill Jones whatever it may be, they want to know that you're doing business with their people. They want to know that they're together in this thing and that you know people and you know the area and they feel comfortable building rapport in your network. Okay. Invested, investigating the buyer, key people, company, industry, and financials. Investigating the buyer. That would be, this is more on the lines of sales on larger, larger end, but in our business, investigate the buyer and the key people. You're talking, you know, here's the thing. You're talking to someone that's 70 years old and they're going, well, I don't need this stuff because I've been taking care of my family all my life and they can bury me in a pine box out in the backyard. I don't care. You know, you've all been through that. And yeah, that's true. You could leave it up to your son or your daughter or somebody else. I don't recommend it. And it sounds crazy. Collar's teeth are coming out. I see myself. I don't like talking to myself, but I like talking to y'all because you can see my emotions, but in, with, with, with the people there, maybe the guy you're talking about to, maybe on the other end of the phone or on the other end of the table is not necessarily the buyer. Maybe they are the insured, but maybe the son needs to be the buyer or the daughter needs to be the buyer because they're going to be the ones, they're going to have to break out the wallet and they're going to be the ones that are cutting the check. So they need to be the buyer of the policy for Mimo or for Papa. 
So when you investigate who that is, are you really talking to the buyer or are you talking to the insurer? Because that's two different things, okay? Because that can be two different things. People want to protect other people for certain reasons. And most of the time it's because financially they've been through something and they don't want to do it again. They don't want to cut a check for $15,000, $20,000 before because they've already had to do it for Aunt Erlene or whoever, okay? And down here on 22, tailoring your presentation. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. And then number 19, preparing questions afterwards. And the preparing questions afterwards is, is, is a great tool here. And when you go on to uh, the, our portal and when you go down here to order your supplies, you can get what we call a referral form. And I will post that too. And the referral form basically says, how did I do? Did I answer all your questions? Are you satisfied with what we did? And by the way, if you are, hey, who else do you know that I can talk to? We always want to solidify that sale and be able to ask the people at the end, are you happy? Because, you know, if you're not, let's go back and talk about something, you know? And most objections, well, I don't have the time, or let's not do it now, or I don't have the money or eh, I don't know. Let me talk to my husband or whatever, wife. That's an objection because you haven't done a good enough job in establishing the first things in there. Okay. You haven't done a good enough job of establishing the rapport, the trust, the relationship. You just, you just ran through the, the, the presentation and given them a quote and said, would you like to buy? And I know there are certain situations that where the person's already heard about final expense. They already know they just want an extra five or 10 and there's no need in beating a dead horse. That's an old term, Texas, but they're, you know, for, from that standpoint. Um, so that's also getting on your customer's level, playing the ball. Are they going fast? Are they just ready to get the sale over with? Do they got to go do they keep looking at their clock, getting to know people? Okay. But always think about these things and I'll post this on my website. I'll also send an email after this today with a recording of this training and an attachment. That way you can use it if you want. Okay, but I always want to give you the tools you want to try to use. So I thought that was interesting this morning. And, you know, I always like to give a piece of information that I didn't do because this is not about Keelan. And this is not about, you know, doing things the way I do things because that's not always the right way. It's just a way. But I like to give you a tool that way. Everybody, you, Vanessa, you, Jose, you, Mike, everybody can tailor your own presentation and your own thought process around your own strengths. Uh, I read an article in the Harvard Business Journal this last week, and despite what we all think that we're supposed to work on our weaknesses, you've got your strengths, you've got your weaknesses, you've got your strengths, you've got your weaknesses. We always think, golly, my weaknesses are here. I got strengths already. I got. I need to pull my, my weaknesses up to here to make them equal. And that's not always true, okay? Some of the greatest leaders in the world know they have weaknesses in these areas. They acknowledge it. They know they're probably not going to get better in these areas too much. So they raise their strengths higher and higher and higher and higher. And that's their strength. You know, most boxers aren't great with both hands. They've got a southpaw or they're right-handed or back and forth. They put one, the strong one in the back. Okay, just a little bit of analogies there. I don't know where I came up with that, but I just made it up and I like it. All right, so I hope everybody can still see what we're doing here and see the screen. Sometimes it goes off and on. For new people, remember two things where I want you to go. I'm not going to go through them today because I want to get to a good point. But, to, but two things right here. You have the tools box. So write this down, okay? This is finalexpenselife.us. I'm going to go ahead again and put it in the chat box. That way you can copy it, okay, and, and use it to go to. This is your tools. This is your toolbox you can go to, and I will reference to it a lot um, that you can use it. It goes all the way through. Uh, all the recorded trainings are here. How to sell policies, tools. Um, download state apps and everything else. Okay. So I just have to, before I forget, let you know that I will be going to uh, Louisiana in a couple of weeks and we have some great things that you're coming back out for y'all. I know you can't wait. And I'm going to give you a little peek preview of these. Number one, 
is our security care plan, which is for our zero to age 40. We'll be coming out to where you can write it online. So that's a big round of applause for us, you know, in the next month, two or three, because we were having to do paper wraps. That's huge Woo! for us. Yeah, thank you, Giselle. So that's a new one for us. Uh, that application and that that product will also be going up to 25,000 versus 15. So you are going to have a brand new opportunity to write people all the way down to zero on the phone through the company, which is a really big deal. Also, all of our web applications, instead of having to call into a live person at home office, you will be able to do that a 24 seven into just an automated number and get that client taken care of whenever you want to. One, one of the other things I've been working on for three years, and this is for Texas people, and you're going to see it roll out. We are now going to be able to, and I'm not going to spoil the beans, uh, we are now going to be able to uh, license people, so to speak, off the streets uh, with a 25000 and below license in Texas in two days or three days. So that's a big for people you may know, for people in downlines, for people that you want to grow your business with, to where they say, hey, how do you do this? We can come in and me being the moderator and me doing the test, we can get someone in one weekend uh, approved, fingerprinted, everything through the Texas Department of Insurance and have them selling policies the next week. That's a huge thing for opportunity for the people you know, love, people that want to get in the business, people want to join in the business, people want to write some policies and make some money. I'm super excited about that because no other state gets it and Texas has it. And I've been working two and a half or three years to try to get this process going because I know there are people that um, that need this and want that. So, uh, so Gishelle, the company says they've got it in beta testing now. So that may be tomorrow. Or that may be four years from now. But we're supposed to go to New Orleans, I'm down to Louisiana uh, on the 6th of February. And that's when the test dates and things are supposed to be coming out. We're working on them. But opportunity, opportunity and optimism are what I like to roll around. And so that's good things coming down the pipeline for Security National Life and for us. Uh, the second thing, or whatever it may be, or third, whatever, is if all of y'all have this right here, finaltraining.us. So if you're new to us, I would strongly suggest you take these seven steps and you work through them because this is going to help you out. These are the seven things that I get most questions on and seven things I think you ought to get, uh, you know, good at. And I, you know, I know I'm boring. I know you don't want to sit there and listen to me and listen to a recording, but nobody is ever too good to go back to the beginning and learn a few things and learn a few tidbits. And uh, I think it's always good to do a refresher. I think it's always good to kind of jump back and forth and do those. So that is a good thing. And uh, I just texted the final training.us on here. So um, jump in there, grab that, put it on your phone, put it on your computer if you want to. Um, but I think that's a good, those are good tools to go through. All right. So um, I need a volunteer today that wants to unmute themselves and you're going to be my client today and so while i pull this up if i can get a volunteer that would be wonderful and just unmute yourself and say it's me or whatever it may be so um not everybody at once so i can do it <laughs> there you are vanessa okay all right perfect how are you so vanessa is new to the uh to the final expense well, her family's not, but she is kind of new to the final expense, and we're super happy to have her. Vanessa, you want to introduce yourself for a second? Yes, my name is Vanessa Costa. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. My family, you're right, is um, been in this business for over 20 years, so they're kind of giving me the ins and outs, and with Keelan's help, um, it's been very good for me, and I'm learning a lot, so thank you. Thank you. I think your father-in-law was just trying to call me for some reason. So um, anyway, he likes to talk tell to him, you. Tell him, tell him that we're doing training. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, jump, kind of look right here on FinalExpenseLife.us. This is how to sell a policy or how to sell a policy over the phone. These are the things that we're going to be using today. 
the final expense presentation, which comes in English and Spanish, the funeral planning fact sheet, which comes in English and Spanish. And notate this, put this on your notes and write it down. We do not require a COVID questionnaire anymore. So we are over that, uh, hopefully, and that's good. So also you will find the presentation in English and Spanish over here on order supplies. Vanessa, you can hear me. Can you see my screen going on right now? Yes, sir. All right, cool. I always like to ask it. You have the final expense brochure right here and the final expense brochure in Spanish. It's under brochures. When you get off the phone with me today, go order some of these. It's very easy. All you have to do is click on final expense brochure, get you 10 or 15 or 20 of them, add it to the cart, and then you continue shopping. Go to your brochures again, get a funeral planning fact sheet, get 20 of those, add to your cart, okay? And then you're in good shape. You can continue shopping. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get some applications in English or Spanish, again, we have all of our, all of our, I mean, all of our applications, or actually we have the simple security plan application in Spanish. Okay. So you can, you can see that and you can grab it in Spanish right here if you want to, but go ahead and, and uh, order some of those and basically put it in your cart. And that way you have a nice, clean, crisp copy of those and a company will send that free of charge. All you do is do that right there. You hit checkout and then you add your address. You won't have all of these. These are the agents. And then you go, hey, right here, it's a zero cost. Continue to payment, complete order, and you are good. It is coming to your address and it will be there in two or three or four days. And you will be prepared for what we are talking about here. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, these tools, which is your brochure. And I'm going to do this in English. OK, see if I can. Uh, it's not letting me do the PDF here. OK, we'll do this right here then. We'll cheat and go here. So this is the presentation piece. Uh, Vanessa, I'm sure you've seen it maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. and maybe even used it and ran, and ran through it here. So I'm going to pretend like Vanessa is my client today. And Vanessa, and remind me again, your husband's name. Jake. Jake. And don't tell Jake I forgot that either. So <laughs> <laughs> there, by the way, I think, aren't y'all pretty newly married? We're actually not married. We're just, um, I guess, common law. We've been living okay, together okay, for a okay. while. I I, I, yeah, you have. So I don't know why I thought you were, but that's that is still great. So you and Jake um, together and common law. So I'm going to pretend like y'all are married ish for the presentation piece. Okay. And uh, which is perfectly where, you know, and I'm because I like to act like we're speaking to a couple. Now we can speak to, you know, individual, you know, and that's OK. It doesn't always have to be a couple, it can be individual. Uh, and it, and it, it works the same. So um, Vanessa and Jake, thank you for joining me today uh, in this meeting. And thank you for allowing me to come to your house or meeting me at Starbucks or whatever we're doing. Hope you can see this presentation. Can you see this? Yes. And I always right here for everybody online, I always take two of these or three of these. You can get as many as you want, but mainly at least take two. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but you give them one uh, and you take one. Now, sometimes if you find yourself with someone that just wants to take it and start reading it while you're trying to present it, uh, and if you feel like that's the case in point, you know, that you're, you're finding, then just snatch it out of their hands and go, hey, I'm talking. No, just uh, <laughs> try, to, try to work through that and try to get, remember, get the attention back on you and get the focus back on you versus them just reading through it because it makes more sense. But I take a silver tip pen, you know, and if you take a pen, it's always proven like a sales tactic that if you take a silver pen and while you're talking, you point like this where you're talking, people's eyeballs typically will follow where what you're doing here. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just human nature. And when you're pointing right there at the application, they will look right there. And that's a great way to get their attention and tap 
and uh, draw or write. I'm a scribbler. I like to scribble on things. I like to circle things. I like to arrow on things. Just my mother's been a teacher for 58 years. Maybe that's part of that. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the the presentation here, uh, Vanessa, I won't take long to talk about the company, but I want to point out a few things. Is that okay? Yes. So Vanessa and Jake, the company that, that we represent is Security National Life, okay? And Security National Life has been around since 1965, and we're a billion and a half dollar company now. And why is that important? Well, here's the main thing is that we have these days a lot of, a lot of companies that are going out of business. And the reason is this. The COVID came along. We had more, uh, we had more out of pocket claims and co the companies are still having these death claims. You know, mortality is high and you've got to be able to write the check to cover them because we're life insurance, right? So when you, when mortality goes up, the, the number of claims that you pay goes up, the money coming out of a company goes up. You have to look at it and go, uh Oh, what are we doing? Okay. So when that happens, you have to be able to cover it. And some companies are going out of business. We at Security National Life are very financially strong. And, uh, and by that asset, you want a company that's financially strong that can absolutely cover you. Because when, when, and here's some key words I want you to write down, and I know all of y'all get tired of me saying this, but here's the two things, if and when. So it's not a matter anymore of if you pass away. So get that out of your vocabulary. It's when. So start practicing using the word when. I know all of us, and I want to look you in the face when I say this. All of us get used to, you know, all of us get used to, I'm going to, Vanessa, I'm going to mute you for a second. I get a little background noise. Um, all of us get used to, with other products, going, Hey, well, if you have a car accident, we'll pay your insurance. If you have a claim with Medicare, you're going to get this. If you have health insurance, you go to the doctor, your deductible is this. If you, uh, if, if you, if you have an indexed UL and you make it to age 65, it'll be worth $10,000. Okay. If, 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 if insurance is built on ifs, if this happens, if this doesn't happen, if, if, if. But with final expense, I want you to kind of change your thought process there. Then I'm going to unmute you, uh, Vanessa, is, um, is that it's not about if it happens, it's when. It's when it happens. And this is going to happen one day. This is going to happen one day. So we have to be ready for that. So does that make sense, Vanessa and Jake? Yes. And I always like at the end of each section, I always want to make sure that I ask the question, does this make sense? Because you have to remember, engage your client. And when you go, yes, you get to go to the next part. If they go, no, that doesn't make sense. You don't get to go to the next part. Uh, so Vanessa, we know as an industry that the average funeral costs are between eight and $10,000. Okay. We just know that because we own some funeral homes. We own some more, you know, some crematories. Okay. How are you going to pay for these things? That's the key question, Vanessa and Jake, that we want to talk to you about. How are you going to pay? When, and that's why I like to point back up here because I've already got it written down. When you pass away, how are you going to pay, Vanessa? Jake, how are you going to pay? And heaven forbid, what if something happens to both of y'all? How are they going to have to pay for both of y'all and take care of that? Well, let me talk to you about something. Social Security won't pay for these this eight to ten thousand dollars anything. It pays a one-time small two hundred fifty-five dollar payment to a qualified dependent. So that's out. Are you a veteran? And I always ask the people at this point in time, are you a veteran? And I like to give them um, credits, claim kudos for being in you know appreciation for being a veteran. And that strikes up a conversation too. If they're in the military and you want to talk about it, oh yeah, my grandpa or my dad or I was or whatever it may be, what branch, it always starts up a good piece of conversation. So you're looking for those conversation pieces and then you're also looking for thank yous. But there's one thing about it, it's not going to pay for this. It provides a little bit of payment on a one-time basis and it provides some support if you're getting buried in a, in a uh, military, uh, you know, uh, um, 
cemetery uh, can can be some benefit there, but it's not going to pay for this whole eight or ten thousand dollars, much less the medical bills and things probably. Um, savings. I don't know, Vanessa, you and Jake, if y'all have uh, twenty thousand dollars, because ten times two is twenty. I don't know if y'all have twenty thousand dollars sitting in the bank just waiting for this and ear tag towards this. But most of the time, the families that we work with, they don't have that. And that's why we're speaking to you. And Vanessa, I know that one day when you pass away, you don't want to leave that burden to your loved ones, correct? That is correct. Yeah, it's just correct. So you don't want to. I know y'all. Like you and Jake, y'all don't want to do that. You want to take care of now that y'all are grown people. You want to make sure you take care of that and that uh, your family doesn't have to pick up the pieces because it's now your responsibility, right? And in the future, if you have kids or don't have kids, it's gonna, now that becomes your responsibility too. Look at the guy in the picture. He's responsible for all these people, <laughs> even grandma and grandpa and everybody. Okay, he's responsible for that. So, so Vanessa, go ahead and read these check marks here out loud to me. That way I know where we are, uh, uh, you know, on the same page. Okay. You want to leave behind loving memories, family heirlooms, inheritance, properties. Okay. And? You don't want to leave behind funeral expenses, medical debt, financial debt, legal fees. Do you all agree? I do. So this is what we want to leave behind. That's why we're talking today. This is what you don't want to leave behind. That's why we're talking today. Okay. So that's the point of this whole thing. So if I zoom out on my helicopter here and get way above it, way out here, I'm looking at it. I made it small. We talk about who we are. We talk about the fact that it is going to happen. We talk about the fact that we know how much it costs. We ask the question, how are you going to pay for it? And it's not going to be these things to unbeknownst your thoughts. And then right here, what do we want to leave behind? And I get the people to agree in with me. And is this a yes at the end? And I say, do you agree? Yes, we move on to the second page, okay? So that's, a, that's the setup. That's the building rapport. That's the building trust. They're like, oh yeah, okay, this makes a lot of sense now. He or she is not just here to sell me something. They're to provide, here to provide me a thought process and an opportunity to release that burden for my family to make sure I took care of what I need to be doing on earth and taking care of this. Because it's not a matter of if, it's when when this happened. So Vanessa and uh, Jake, it's, this is a very important part right here, okay, of our presentation. And this is something I want to give y'all because this is very important. All of my, and I say this, all of my clients really appreciate this portion of it because it's really, it, it really does make sense. So Vanessa, I'm going to do something for you here, okay? Uh, do you, um, and this is basically Vanessa, you filling this out for Jake, okay? Do you know his name and address? I'm sure you do, right? Okay. Uh, you got his telephone Maybe. number. You know, <laughs> you know his education. Uh, what's his birthday? You're you asking me? Birthday? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> January okay. 15th. Okay. How old is he? 29. What's his social? 555 you know Do you know it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you know it though? No, I don't. Okay. So here's the deal. I take my pen or whatever and I'll, I'll circle that. Most people don't. So that's to totally okay. Where was he born? Uh, El Paso, Texas. Okay. And you know his occupation is employer. You know your name. Uh, and y'all aren't married. Uh, do you know his father and mother's name probably, right? Yes. <laughs> do you know where they were born? Yes. Okay, both of them? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're looking, doing good. Is he a veteran? No. Okay, so does does Jake have other brothers and sisters? Yes. Okay. One brother. And one brother and a sister. What about aunts and uncles? He does. What about cousins? Yes. You probably know most of their names right <laughs> here. Probably could recite them a little bit. But I'm willing to bet you don't know all their addresses and all their phone numbers without looking it up, right? Right. And then maybe all the cousins and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, th but this is so this is a very important piece of information here. And you did good because a lot of times 
Some people don't remember the birth date of their mother and father. Sometimes people blank on the birthday, you know, and, and you can kind of you can kind of play around with the client. And here's the thing, too. This gives you talking points. This gives you things to expand on that you can look for. Oh, yeah. You know, I was born there. Dad was born there. My mom and dad were from there. Oh, there. You know, I've been through there. It gives you conversation pieces to continue to get to know the client, get to know their family and get to know who they are. But the point of it is, is that there are things in here, okay, that she didn't know about Jake. And I'll bet you, Jake, there's some things in here that Jake doesn't know about, about her parents and her family and the extended family. These are going to be important pieces of information that are going to be needed at the time when someone passes away. These are things that are in obituary, things that are going to be talked about, things that are needed. And this gives you a chance to give Jake and Vanessa two of these presentation pieces that you say this. Hey, I'm glad that we played along here. Jake and Vanessa, I'm going to give you one of these when we leave here. And, uh, and you, I want you, Jake, to fill one out for you tonight or tomorrow or whenever you can. I want you to completely fill it out because this is going to help Vanessa. And Vanessa, you fill one out because you look through your phone. You go ahead and get all the contacts off your phone. You put it down on paper. You complete this. And then Jake, you'll have one. And Vanessa, you have one, right? Y'all both have these, these historical information pieces. You can combine it as one. And that way you can tell your family, hey, uh, you know, and then when, when the policy comes back, I'm going to repeat this three times. When the policy comes back, when the policy comes back, when the policy comes back, you'll have all this information all in one. You'll have the presentation, you'll have the funeral planning fact sheet, which I'm about to show you about, and you'll have your, your, the policies all in one spot, and it will be all taken care of. Now, what did I do subconsciously uh, in, that, in that comment of saying when the policy comes back? Vanessa, did you catch that? Um, you're pretty much getting them ready for the sale make, and ensuring that they're gonna, their policy is gonna be approved. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, whatever. There's many terms in marketing and management called pre-selling or setting the table or building the value or um, whatever it may be. But yeah, I said when the policy. So I'm putting it in their mind that they're already going to purchase a policy. Okay, but uh, but uh, but it's not confrontational. Like, oh, you're buying, aren't you? It's just like when the policy comes back, you'll have all this in, in one spot. And I also say this. Hey, there's some other things in here that are really important too that you and Jake can fill out. Your preferred funeral home, your your, prefer, your preferred you know a disposition, um, anything specials or scriptures, what you would like to see. Pallbearers are a big deal because some people fight over that all the time. Oh, I thought you were friends with Bill, or I didn't want Steve in there, or whatever. Just some other things, and I use this portion to go. Hey, here's some detailed things that you can put in here. That way, when the policy comes back, you'll also have it there, okay? And that's what I do. That's a building rapport. And we don't give our clients rubber duckies like Aflac or a folder or gift or flower bouquet. We give them a peace of mind knowing that when they complete this, and I will challenge everybody on the phone here as agents, grab you two or three of these and make all your family members fill them out because Let's say that Vanessa and Jake, something happened to them together. There would be a lot of a, trying to accumulate information together. And if you have that, so a guy told me only about three or four weeks ago, he said, you know, your family's going to remember you for all the things you did for them along your life. When that day comes, they're going to remember, you know, oh, well, they did this or they did that. And they're going to be happy, but they're also going to re remember the last thing you did for them or the last thing you didn't do for them. They're always going to remember more the last thing you did for them or the last thing you didn't do for them. And that's what we're talking about. I don't know if you want that to be you. I don't know if you want that to be thought of you that way, but it's an easy process to take care of this. That way, that last piece won't be a, how are we going to pay for it? That last piece won't, hey, we got to go down to the to the park and set up for this benefit dinner. Hey, did you go online and set up that GoFundMe account? Hey, Uncle Bill, could you mind chipping in here? Pass the bucket. Do a chicken dinner. 
probably everybody on the phone line can relate to one of those. And that's what we don't want to happen, even though we would, even though families would come together and they would take care of it. But it's going to be, why did Bill not do that? Why did Vanessa not do that? I mean, they can go out and do these other things, but they couldn't think enough of us to protect themselves in a policy. Why? Okay. I don't want that to be me. Okay. All right. I'm off on a tangent there. Um, so you've got this. You're going to be giving these to each one of the clients and go fill this out. So Vanessa, go ahead and read these things right here because these, these bullet points, because final expense insurance provides an affordable and easy way to manage our finances so that you won't leave the burden to your loved ones. Read those bullet points so I can know that we're on the same page together. Okay, whole life protection up to 35,000, affordable rates that will never increase, protection that can never be reduced or canceled, simple application with no medical exam, immediate benefits from the very first day, guaranteed cash value, anyone through 90 years of age is eligible, eligible to apply. Perfect. Do those all make sense? Yes. Perfect. And for those of y'all that don't know, I'm going to do a little sidetrack here. I haven't done this in a while, but on my training page here under your tools, this is an actual copy of my policy I wrote when I was 41. And uh, I'm not telling you my age today, but it was seven years ago. Uh, but uh, I pay $410 a year for this policy. It's a $20,000 policy. So I pay $410. Let me do some quick math. In 20 years from that date, which will be, I'll be 61, I will have paid $8,200. The cool news is, is that I'll have cash value in my policy of $6,053. So if I want to cancel the whole policy and go to the casino, I can and put it all in red or black, $6,000, like Mattress Mac. Uh, but put Keelan, it all in is red this, or black. I'm so sorry. Is this something that we can give to the client or does it get mailed to them? Sure. Yeah, it's not proprietary. I mean, you, you can find it right here on Illustration of Coverage, right here okay. underneath my tools for you. So yeah, you can do this. Now, Vanessa, I'm going to I'm gonna warn you a little bit. Um. I know a lot of salespeople are used to giving illustrations and a lot of a lot of salespeople are used to providing uh, what we call living benefits. So in an IUL situation or a UL situation, portion of this sale is that, oh, in 20 years, you're going to have thirty four thousand dollars in this thing. Well, that is if the interest rates do good. That is if the index does good, the S&P. That is also if the person puts in enough money up front. So I want you to be, I want to draw this, the line in the sand and be real clear. In middle to low income families, we don't always want to promote living benefits. And the reason is, is this, is that if they get in here and on year 10, they see that they've got $2,351 built up in their policy and they get in a pinch, guess what's going to be the first thing to be canceled? Their and so the goal of final expense, the goal of whole life is to be able to have it forever and to be mm -hmm. able to the family to use that $20,000. It's not for the client to use the cash value. Now, okay. with that being said, the re and, and you can use it however you want to. If you think it and for younger people, this is a great sale. You know, hey, you can grow it and in the future, you you know, but for people that are 65 or 70, whatever, might be think a little bit twice about saying that because they get in the middle of low income families, three or four hundred dollars is a lot of money uh, and they could be canceling it. And there you go again. But yes, you can use it. Uh, I would suggest everybody online here, write your own policy with us. It's almost a free policy. Anyways, you get paid full commission on your policy and some of y'all will be making money. OK. Second thing is that we have loan value. The loan value is, I won't go into that deeply, but that's where you can take a loan against your policy. And then the last thing is really important here is a paid up benefit. Let me tell you why this is important. We get people all the time to go, I got to pay this damn thing forever and ever. And what if I pay more than what it's worth? What if I pay more money than it's worth? It's not a good deal. You know, um, Dave Ramsey told me not to do that. He told me to buy term and invest the rest. So 
Dave, come on. Now, listen, it's not always the best idea. So uh, if you do invest the rest, maybe, but 98% of people don't invest the rest. They buy the term and it goes up and the price is so high, they can't do it and they outlive it and then they don't have anything again, okay? They don't have anything. So that's what happens to those people. But I suggest you write yours that way you can look at your illustration. But here's the thing. Remember I said when I'm 61 years old, I'll have paid $8,200 into this policy. I can quit paying my premium at that point in time when I'm 61, call the company, I'm done paying premiums, and I will have a paid up policy, completely paid up policy for 12366 So I paid 8200 now it's worth 12366 I'm on fixed income at 61. I don't want to pay it anymore, but I do want this policy in my shoebox to know my kids have it. And, uh, and it's there. That's the goal of whole life final expense policy. It's about that loved one finding that one policy that was stuck up underneath some stinky socks in the back of a drawer that was you, you thought enough of them that you wrote a 10, 15, $20,000 policy on and they can go take it to the funeral home and or they can get their money, call, call the company. And here's the thing. When we get a death benefit in our hand at Security National Life, we pay that claim within 36 hours. We understand people need money, you know, and it's tacky to say somebody's in the refrigerator waiting to get, you know, taken care of. Uh, but we understand the urgency and we pay our claims. We're one of the fastest in the industry to pay claims. Okay. So it's very important. So I just want you to know to build your confidence level that when people come up with that objection, I got to pay this thing on. No, you don't. You know, at some point in time, you'll have a reduced paid up option. At some point in time, you'll have cash value and loan. You know, we'll talk about that. So you don't always have to pay it to your hundred. Now you can pay. One of my options at my age at 61 will be to keep paying that $38 a month and I'll have it forever and grow it. Okay. But think about it. And we we're paying a four and a half percent interest rate on this, uh, you know, at the bottom there, four and a half percent. That's pretty good. So I didn't mean to get off a tangent, but I want to build the stage of how important it is. At this point in time, once that, uh, once that uh, the, the client, you know, gets through talking here and saying this, I say, hey, does that make sense? Yes. So I go from right here into the funeral planning fact sheet. There's only two pieces you need to remember. That's this one. And that's the funeral planning fact sheet. And I go right over to this one and I pull it up and I say, Vanessa and Jake, also what I want to give you is this to put with your policy. So I keep saying, put with your policy to so put with your policy because they're building, they're going, yeah, this makes sense. Wow. This, they got, they keep looking at each other going, yeah, we need this. We, this is good. This is going to, this is going to release that burden and make sure that we are taken care of. And I'm going to tell you all something. There's typically one person in a relationship that is in charge of the finances most of the time. Okay. And there's typically one person and when you, whether it's the female or the male or the husband or wife, when you get them together though, uh, one of them's going, yeah, I've been, this is a good conversation because I don't know if he's got anything at all, or I don't know if she's got anything at all. I don't know what we got. All I, all I'm, all I know is that she gives me a $20 bill every once in a while. And you know, that's my allowance. You know, that happens. It's one of the, one of the spouses just like, I have no idea. I don't really care but they do care because they're like, crap, I hope they don't leave me high and dry with nothing when they pass away one day. But you're scared to ask the other one, how much money we got in the bank? They're like, oh, don't talk about it. We don't talk about those things at the dinner table. You know, oh, a couple hundred thousand, they've got zero probably because they don't want to talk about it. Okay, so this is good conversation for them to be on the same page because one of them is usually like, yeah, we're getting this. I'm buying all I can for you and then I'll push you off that cliff over there. But anyway, I was kidding. Uh, so the funeral planning fact sheet. This is a list. And when we read it out loud, it says, I want to show you. Did y'all know that I have that deal on my computer? I didn't know that. Look at that. When you, on, the, on my computer, I can hit read out loud and somebody, somebody, <laughs> somebody reads I'll just let her read it.
can hear it, Keelan. Can't hear it. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Can you hear my voice here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So it's funny though. This it reads it out loud. I thought it was cool the other day. But anyways, planning a funeral. I'll get that voice option off there. So planning a funeral, especially when you find yourself in a difficult time of bereavement, can be a very daunting test. The list that follows contains some decisions that need to be made by every family, sometimes in just a matter of hours. We have seen the best way to plan is plan ahead and make difficult time more bearable. Okay. And this is what it's about. You've got vital statistics that you're going to need to find. You've got funeral arrangements, preparing of necessary papers. You've got cosmetology and hairdressing and flowers for, you know, for whoever and women. You got your limousine, you got your funeral car. Okay. Over here, you've got other decisions, preparation of your home, clothing, transportation, lodging, people to notify, cemetery arrangements. Look at that. Memorial marker, headstone is going to cost money, bills to pay. Okay. So we have a list of 122 things here. And when you read this statement right over here, doing this now will take, take a lot of stress off the family later on. It's good to know that it's all taken care of, okay? We don't do pre-need, we do final expense, okay? So we don't take care of a lot of these things as far as the details go, but we make sure, daggum sure, that we don't just pay for the funeral, we pay for extra things. And if there's going to be enough money in there, then when me, mom, papa, somebody comes to looking for that or the kids, it's going to be all there together and they're going to have the 15,000 or 20,000 and they can go to the funeral home with the stuff that we wrote down and go, you know what, let's get them that nice casket over there. Or do you want to walk into that funeral home and go, oh, well, let's, where's the cheap ones? They're out back. You know, where's the wooden boxes? They're out back. Where's the metal box? I like that one, but we just can't do that. Sure would like to get mom or dad one of those. We can't. I don't think that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> it happens every day. So funeral planning fact sheet, Vanessa, is something that I want you to put together with the planning brochure here and the funeral planning fact sheet. It goes all together, right, with your policy, and you can put it in one place. And your family can know that you and Jake were responsible enough to take care of this. And if something happened now, but when it does in the future, it's all taken care of. Now, if that doesn't, if that doesn't, you know, build trust with a client, if you can't build trust that away and notoriety and value and a calmness at the end, you know, I don't know what does. Because with those two pieces, you should be able to to build that confidence. And then at the end of that one, I go right back over here and I start talking to them. And I just, I don't pause a bit. I go right back over here and I say, hey, Vanessa, and hey, Jake, we usually talk about something because we talked about the funeral being eight or 10. We usually start talking to someone about maybe a $12,000 policy. We can go either way you want to. And I'm gonna quote y'all a $12,000. Vanessa, and, I'm, and I don't even ask. I didn't say, can I quote you? I'm gonna quote you a $12,000 policy Vanessa, is there anything health-wise you need me to know? Uh, how's your height and weight? Are there any, talk to me about your medications that you're taking, if you are. No, no I'm not medi taking any. No I'm medication. good, I'm healthy. Yeah, and Jake, is there anything? No. So I just, from this point, and I'm not going to go forward from this point, because that's kind of closing the deal. Uh, but when you do that, then you can go over here to your rater, hit your rate calculator, go in there, and then on this piece of paper, you can go in here on the client, and this is where, hey, $12,000, actually, this is uh, 12000 here. You can do it either way. You can put like the good, better, best, whatever you feel comfortable, whatever you like looking at, and then you can do uh, client. Vanessa, yours is going to be uh, $45, you know, $45 a month, and then for, for Jake, it's going to be, you know, $48 a month, okay? And so that's 90 that's uh, $93, okay? And uh, Vanessa and Jake, I think that's a very good, you know, portion to uh, of your budget to to put in there to, to make sure that y'all both have twenty four thousand dollars. Right. And that you're taken care of. We can even go in here for y'all and add an accidental rider if you all want to. That way it changes the twelve thousand to twenty four thousand. And I hope you all all know that you can do accidental death with us 
and you can change the act. You can add twice the benefit on there, uh, up to twenty five thousand, and it will go to it will double it in case of an accident because that's called accidental death, and it's very inexpensive, two or three four dollars a month. If you have children, uh, of course, most of the time we don't have child rider on people on the simple security plan because it's over forty. But when we come out with when, when the new one rolls out to the security care, you're going to be able to add children in there. And it's going to be really inexpensive to add $10,000 riders okay, on there. But uh, total monthly, uh, Vanessa, we're looking at $93 for both of y'all to be covered uh, for $24,000 or $43,000. Does that make sense? No, and they're going to either tell you, I don't know if that, yeah, it's a lot of money. Then you can go over here and go, we can go all the way down to 2,500, but I want to make sure you're at least covered when I leave this room today. I can go all the way up in some cases to 35,000 over here, but I want to be sure and make sure that we take some, we, that you're covered, you know, uh, and, but I also want to make sure I fit your budget. It's very important in this round that we fit budgets because we got people on low income. We want to make sure it fits the budget. If not, you're going to go home and two months later, the people you thought loved you the most and they were nicest to you the most, they're going to call and go, well, I didn't, we found another policy that we had. Now we got two. We got to get rid of one of them. And Papa said, we can't, we don't need this one. When you left, he said, we don't need it. You know, whatever it may be. So I want to make sure I clarify and I seal the deal or I solidify the sale and make sure, are we all good? Is this good? Is this the one we're going with? Are we going? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Okay. So we make sure that that's taken care of. And then we go in here and we get the contact information and we close the deal. And then at the end of the conversation, we pull up our referral form and it's uh, I didn't find it the other day either. But there is a referral form under here. Uh, let me see if it starts. Uh, um, counselor evaluation, maybe. There you go. It's called counselor evaluation form. So we download this and we do this at every single last time that when we write a policy. Vanessa, are you online? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. All right, good. Hey, Vanessa, I got to ask you one more question, okay? If that's okay. Yes. Did I make you did I make you and Jake feel comfortable today? Yes. Are you happy with the, the coverage that, that I've put together for y'all? Yes, we are. Did I answer all your questions? Yes, sir. And do you see what I'm kind of doing? And if you can see my face, I'm kind of shaking up and down. I like to do that because people will mimic you, or they're like the parents or parakeets or whatever. Uh, would you recommend me to friends and relatives? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Perfect. So with that being said, Vanessa, I really appreciate you and Jake today. Um, yeah, I want I want clients just like y'all. Y'all are fun. Y'all are cool. Y'all get it. Y'all understand it. And I want clients just like y'all, you know, and, and build my book of business with people just like y'all. Would you mind while I wrap up here, I'm going to close down and I'm going to put my stuff together here. Um, would you mind? And just hand this over to them. And just go, would you mind writing down some names of some people that I can call? I won't bother them. I'm just going to say, hey, I was down here visiting y'all. And, and, and you know, they thought you might be interested in visiting with me. Would y'all mind doing that while I, while I wrap up? No, okay. And I just start wrapping my stuff up here. Getting my briefcase, getting my stuff, wrapping up. And, and intentionally, like, take a few minutes. And they'll start writing down. They'll start writing down, you know, people's names and numbers. And if they don't, that means you did a bad job. Okay, and that's okay too. Okay, we'll move on down. But 90% of people don't follow through with this because they want to get the check and they want to get out of that door and they want to go ahead and scan that puppy into the system and say they made a sale before, before the client says, no, we don't want this anymore, <laughs> before the client cancels and, and, and pulls back out of it. Okay, so counselor evaluation form at the end. So these three pieces you are going to form your own way to do your presentation. And I challenge you to do that. Every one of y'all are in different locations, different dialect, different languages, English and Spanish, you know, whatever it may be, um, different cultures. 
you're going to form it your own way. And I challenge you to do that. Don't do it the Keelan way. But I do challenge you to do is to have a system or, or you know, a process that you follow, even on the phone. And that way you can do it in your sleep, you know. And then you you go through your presentation and go, God, I, I, I've done it so much, I don't even remember doing it. You know? So hope I said something good. But they will just automatically be drawn to you. They will automatically be drawn to you. And I'm going to end uh, today with um, this, again, this top selling behaviors. I want everybody to look at this. I will post this again. But did I, in that presentation, did I establish credibility and trustworthiness? Did I build rapport with Vanessa? Did I manage the call effectively with Vanessa? Did I did I work through her contacts? Did I caught with her friends and families, you know, and in her her, you know, or Jake, you know, I may could have done a better job of that just because I'm doing a presentation, but normally I would have dug more into there. Okay. Is Vanessa the buyer for and Jake the buyer? Sure they are. And did I tailor my presentation to them as I transitioned through the presentation piece to the final expense funeral planning to the referral? And did I did I prepare questions? Did I ask her questions, you know, effectively that led to her, you know, obviously giving me questions back? Did I play ping pong with her? Did I hit the ball back and say, what do you think? Hit the ball back to me. Let's communicate back and forth and let's have a conversation. So, hey, I just cannot do this without y'all. I want to thank y'all so much for joining on today on the new agent training. I hope the presentation presenting the product helps you uh, with your presentation and helps you become better um, at, uh, and more comfortable with it. We are servants. We are serving our people and we are special. You are special. People need you. You have to get out there and tell people, okay, that who you are and that you can help them and that you're the family protector, the professional family protector and you want to take care of them because you don't want to go to a funeral and be on the back row trying to get out of there because you never did do your job. So thank you so much today for joining on. I got an hour and four minutes. I did good. And so I try to keep you all this a short time. I know that's about the attention spam, but uh, I'll do another topic tomorrow. I really appreciate you all jumping on and uh, care for every single one of you. And as I say, always in Texas, adios.